What's up guys? So today I'm sharing the box of goodies. I got some multi-tools in here in a trade, uh, as well as some extras, which I am very grateful for. And I'm very excited about this. There's actually going to be a, uh, a video on most of this stuff, so I'm not going to go into detail. I'll do separate videos, but I did want to show this. So first we have a Leatherman. Alright, this one is the Juice B2, which is really cool. Uh, if you like knives and you like Leathermans, this is the one for you. That's all it has in it, is knives. Well, we're going to talk about that in a separate video though, so I don't want to spoil it. Then we have uh, another Leatherman. This one is the Fuse. We have another Leatherman. <laughs> this one's the Blast. They look identical, but they're not. We have another Leatherman. And this one is the Kick. And it looks again like the same thing, but it's not. Actually, all three of these are going to be compared to each other in a video. They are all extremely similar. Um, you know, basically the tool set up on the inside is different. But that'll be for a whole separate video. Then we have some extras here. All right, which is a really nice surprise. I wasn't expecting these at all from the trade. The cool wine tool. Or bartender tool, I should call it. And we have two uh, flashlights. These are uh, Trust Fire. Says 8-A2. I think this one's the same, yep. And these are uh, pretty neat. Uh, just for small little, you know, cheaper lights. I know a lot of people like uh, budget flashlights. And these ones seem really awesome. Let me pop this uh, tail cap off real quick. Show you these run on single double A's. I'm always a fan of single double A flashlights. I do like the bright orange button, all right, easy to find. Obviously, if you need a flashlight, you're gonna need it in the dark, right? So, just pretty cool. Awesome uh, budget light. Has a really decent beam. I just, I really like it. These are just awesome to pick up and just throw them everywhere. Every drawer, every bag, every place, every room. No excuse not to have a bunch of flashlights everywhere. Uh, but that was a really cool surprise. Those will definitely get used. Then we have this uh, vintage, like, bar uh, tool, bartender's tool. So basically, the end here is a bottle opener. But this pivots out, all right. And we also have, you know, your regular cork for your wine bottles and stuff. And this uh, has a little bit of movement in it as well, so I can grab the edge of the bottle. Very cool. And on the back we have a little blade, and that is basically just to cut, you know, that um, you know piece that's on top of the bottle. When you have wine bottles, you sometimes it's aluminum foil. You need to kind of score that all around and cut that. So that is really cool. That'll get used. I'll definitely save that. Um, and then we have. The biggest part of the trade here, let's see. Oh, there's other stuff in the box. <laughs> so hang on a second, I forgot. So first off, these are batteries that go with that tool. And this is the most exciting part of it just because it's very rare. But he uh, also sent this little multi-tool, which is really cool. Let's go ahead and break this open real quick. I've had something very similar to this and I think they've been, they've been unbranded. This one doesn't seem to have any markings on it. So here's a better look at that. I've actually had quite a few different setups on these little multi-tools. They're always handy. Just good to have them. All right, so that was a really nice surprise. That was not part of the trade at all. A little uh, bonus item, which I appreciate. And then he has some patches, and I believe these are custom patches that he makes. So the first one here is Snowboard Avalanche. And this is really cool because these, these patches, I mean, obviously it's just kind of shiny thread, but they really have kind of a 3D look. I don't know if that's on purpose or not. This is pretty cool for the extreme sportsmen out there if you do a snowboarding and stuff. Obviously you can see this is like through the lens of like a GoPro or something. We got the record button, a little battery power. Just super cool. I really like that a lot. Then this one is the Volcano Mountain Biking. Alright, so same deal. Again, it's kind of hard to give you that idea, but the sheen from the, uh, the threading, it really does kind of make it pop out. So, same deal, only for bikers. And then we have... Flying Squirrel Armageddon. And I forget what this is called, this sport, where you literally have this suit with, with wings like a flying squirrel. I've seen people just jump off the side of a mountain and just kind of glide down, which is absolutely insane. I have to say, if I found out I was terminally ill, <laughs> knock on wood, I hope that never happens, but I would try something like that. But knowing that I may have some, some years left in me, I, I don't have any interest whatsoever in this. But that is certainly an extreme sport. If you've never seen it, it's definitely worth watching some videos on people doing this it is absolutely insane totally insane i've never been like a, a huge thrill seeker in fact people who know me know that i hate roller coasters i don't like 
I don't like theme park rides. Well, I shouldn't say that. I actually really love theme park rides, like actual theme parks. But when you go to like the county fair and you go to a traveling circus and stuff, F that. I am not into it. I'll tell you a real quick story. Um, when uh, I was younger, we went to one of those traveling circus, you know, type deals. And uh, they had the boat, you know, the boat that just swings back and forth. And my dad and my sister went on it and it broke. The, the guy who was running the machine wasn't even there, you know, loaded everyone onto it. The thing took off and the guy took off. All right. He went to go get himself a funnel cake. And this is exactly like the stereotype you'd have for a traveling circus uh, worker, I suppose. Um, you know, ripped shirt, mustard stain, just kind of dirty uh, looking dude. And uh, he was gone. And when the thing is supposed to uh, slow down, there's a tire, all right? That's the brake system. So the tire comes up and it makes some friction, you know, on the bottom of the boat. And it slows it down so it can stop, right? Uh, well, guess what? It was so rusty and old and crusty and, and obviously not checked. They don't do any safety checks on these machines. They just kind of set them up and move on to the next place, pack them in. Anyway, boat's coming down full speed and it just, poof, it breaks off and goes flying. And it was, it was terrifying because I thought my, my dad and my sister were going to get hurt, like really, really hurt. Um, luckily, they, no one got hurt, but the thing broke off and it's just swinging back and forth and back and forth and the guy is nowhere to be found. All of a sudden, just comes back, literally face covered in powdered sugar, shirt covered in powdered sugar, just had himself some, some Zeppelis uh, or some funnel cake or something, came like running back that he sees that it's still going and uh, literally is, is like yelling at the people at the boat like, all right, just stay calm, you know, it's going to slow down eventually. Great. Awesome. So like literally 15 minutes of back and forth, back and forth. So it was finally just stopped. And my dad, I mean, his, my sister was young. My sister was probably, I don't know, five or something. So she's cracking up. She loves it. Um, I don't think she had any idea that her, uh, her life was in danger, <laughs> that something else could have broke. Uh, but my dad was obviously not happy, not happy at all. And I remember just uh, immediately leaving after that after he uh, had some choice words for some people who worked there. But uh, yeah, that's, so that, that was my experience. This has nothing to do with this, uh, this story, obviously, but I just thought I'd share that with you. So these are really cool. I really do appreciate that. And uh, finally, we have the, um, the tool of the day, for me anyway. This is what makes it extra, extra exciting. I mean, I love all the stuff. But this is a tool that uh, I've been looking for for a while, and this is the Victorinox Auto Tool. That's right. This was dedicated for um, car repair, <laughs> or at least for mechanics or anyone who's uh, into car stuff. So there's a couple interesting tools, but that is for a separate video. So, sorry to tease you there. But I do want to make a video on this. I'm going to make a video on this separately. And of course, I'm going to make a video comparing all three of these multi-tools, all right? So stay tuned for those videos. Um, I have kind of been on a multi-tool kick lately. You know, I kind of go back and forth. I gravitate towards one specific part of, you know, gear for a while. Then I'm like, all right, now I'm into this for a while, now I'm into that. I kind of bounce back and forth, you know? I've always loved multi-tools. It's just lately in the last maybe month or two, I've been really like kind of extra focused on getting a couple models that, uh, you know, I've always wanted and learning about new models I didn't even know existed. In fact, besides these, I have two other multi-tools that I picked up um, that I'm very, very excited about. Uh, a little bit more rare, but we'll, we'll talk about that in the future. So anyway, I just wanted to uh, do this unboxing. Thank the person who I did my trade with. I really do appreciate it. A great deal. And I uh, hope you like your stuff as well. I ended up trading him a Spyderco Spider Card, which is really neat. Very uh, awesome discontinued knife from Spyderco. If you don't know about it, you can you know check it out, Google it real quick. But you know, it's shaped like a credit card and it does fit in a wallet. So it's nice to have a little backup blade there. But anyway, that is all. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you guys have a fantastic day and I will see you tomorrow with a brand new video. Take care.